What's up ladies and gents, welcome back to another episode here where we're going to be absolutely killing it of course as the nation of Austria and the focus of this episode is actually going to be dominating the Balkan region. Now keep in, wa- keep in mind guys that in game we just dealt with the first center of reformed and so that's what's on my mind as a player naturally is the reformation but more specifically the centers of reform uh if if you briefly saw there the ottomans are actually involved in a war against georgia now i think they were called in by aq and uh, georgia's ally is actually russia so i mean especially considering the fact or muscovy rather especially considering the fact that the ottomans are um far from as glorious as they otherwise could be uh that's definitely a good thing because i suspect that the ottomans ultimately would win that war but the fact that they're involved in a war in general the fact that they're potentially walking off that their manpower and finances could be affected that's definitely a good thing for me because in hindsight i know that the second and third at least if i recall correctly the second and third uh centers do not spawn anytime soon and uh that means though although that's on my mind when i'm playing the game my truce is coming up here with the ottomans and it's going to give me a good opportunity to go in that that is also on my mind is hoping that uh, i don't have anything else on my plate at the time of our truce coming up if you think about it in terms of what we've actually done in terms of administrating the empire guys i mean we've obviously got the unions which aren't that significant in terms of administrating the empire but We've reigned in Italy. There is no unlawful territory. Uh, I've stolen the unions and turned them into vassals, integrating them. By that, I mean the Scandinavians. A lot of land to be added towards the empire. We've dealt with the western part of the empire or the eastern part of France, the lowlands. Again, no unlawful territory. The territory has expanded. And, of course, the Protestant Reformation. We've dealt with the three centers of Protestantism and the first of the Reformed religion. So in terms of administrating the empire, it's a kind of a late hour here. And uh, we're kind of uh, considering there is a grand total of two heretics, which I believe are Wartenberg and Ulm, who I believe I have a truce with. So uh, no enforcing religion anytime soon. Uh... Yeah, the the religious unity of the empire is pretty good. And I'm actually trying to hurry things along here. As you can see right now, adding some provinces to the empire, getting some imperial authority. And I actually think uh, I added those... uh, Yeah, I'm going to release three princes here within Scandinavia of Finland, Sweden, and Norway. Uh, Because of what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to get imperial authority moving along... And uh, the sooner I can pass those reforms, the sooner I can revoke. That's kind of what's on my mind at the moment. And uh, with that being said, in the context of the Ottoman War, uh, I remember episodes ago talking about feeding subjects into the Ottomans and Bulgaria being a good option. And that is exactly what I have done to some extent with Byzantium, of course. And uh, it's something that I'm going to continue doing with uh, Serbia. But... I'm actually going to go ahead and use the uh, Deus Volt Holy War CB against the Ottomans. Now, let me just say that I have begun integrating Byzantium, as you guys can see. And I did that, of course, before I go to war, which is pretty significant. I, I was also thinking of other things I should do before I go to war, like releasing princes now instead of later. Um, which did cost us some prestige, but luckily we got a lot of prestige and hopefully about to gain some more via the war with the Ottomans, who is still uh, our rival. Uh, So also some power projection. Uh, But either way, guys, if we use the Holy War CB, that is going to allow me to give occupations to Serbia and or myself. Whereas the Reconquest CB, of course, we can take provinces for ourselves, but that will be at the cost of Diplo points. Now, I'm happy to spend points, admin points, coring up provinces such as bulgarian provinces i have no problem doing that uh, as we have spent most of our time administrating the empire and 
you know, it's been about 80 years almost, about 75 years here. And if you look geographically at what I've caught up myself, uh, it's certainly not much. So I certainly have not spent a copious amount of admin points uh, doing coring. And uh, I've completed our religious ideas. So I'm perfectly happy to core up those provinces as a, it's a good productive use of our admin points, right? When we're just sitting here anyway. Um, just keep in mind the fact that I have not actually uh, stated up a lot of the territory that we have taken. Primarily because I don't own the entire state and or it's just not a valuable state. Like Bosnia is quite a poor state. Um, also, it's worth noting that uh, I do have Crusade here as we do Crusade successfully in that first engagement against the Ottomans. We do have the Crusade modifier. And if I recall correctly, my uh, military was pretty much on par with his at this stage, uh, except I certainly outnumbered him. So feeling really good about that. Uh, took a nice discipline advisor there. But of course, I don't think he has maybe one in Valahia, which is occupied by Georgia, actually, surprisingly. But he doesn't, because of the other war, but he doesn't actually have a uh, fort on the Balkan side. So the downside is that it's not worth a much war score. You know, the upside is that we occupied it within months, building up that war exhaustion, lowering that enthusiasm, etc. And uh, we do have the Holy War CB, so... Somebody's troops over there being a little bit of a liability, losing battles for me, but that's just how it goes. And uh, I think it's a priority of mine right now to uh, get over the strait. And it dawns on me that I might have to walk all the way around. Uh, definitely one of the biggest strengths of getting that inheritance if you do. I know the, the focus of this series was to prove that you can do it without it. And uh, I firmly believe that. Uh, it, it honestly does not even ultimately uh, affect that much. And that's exactly what I was trying to prove. Like we obtained the land anyway after uh, revoking and forming the empire. Um, and we're able to do it at uh, just a, a quick, a, as quick of a pace here without getting the Burgundian inheritance. But I'm just saying if you do, one of the major benefits that's dawned on me is the uh, Navy prospects, right? The fact that you're going to be able to state up those very valuable provinces in the lowlands um, for free. And uh, the fact that it's going to dramatically affect your economy and your naval uh, force limit, allowing you to uh, get those naval units, which will help you dramatically, especially against the Scandinavians. And of course, in this kind of scenario, blocking the strait, I'm... Feeling very salty, I assure you, <laughs> as uh, continuously I keep losing battles here with my subjects derping around. But it is what it is. I know that ultimately I will win this war one way or another. I'm just so much more overwhelmingly powerful than the Ottomans. It doesn't matter. I mean, it does matter in terms of swiftness, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not that impactful, the fact that I'm struggling. I mean, we're clearly even winning the war. It's just the fact that I have Holy War CB and we keep losing the battles far from ideal now i also want to stress guys that i right now <clears throat> you can see that i keep checking the relations with castile and part of the reason is because uh i'm trying to max my relations in pretty much every regard with castile but i keep checking it making sure it's really high and that his friendly attitude and i'm also checking when i open up that tab i'm looking at his rivals uh, because i don't want him to rival me if it can be avoided and the reason is because, of course, he has a Habsburg heir on his throne. So I have it in mind that uh, as long as we're not allied together, um, I can PU him. I, I can potentially claim his throne as soon as his ruler dies and the Habsburg comes of age, whether he inherits it immediately or at a later date, the throne. From my experience, there's about 50% likelihood that he won't have an heir. So it's about a 1 in 2 likelihood that... I'm going to be able to PU Castile, and I don't want to have a truce with him because I just broke an alliance in order to attack him. I mean, definitely many of my PUs are via truce breaking, and uh, it can definitely be done. Look at Savoy adding plenty of promises to the Empire there, which I had a big smile on my face until it occurred to me that I'm now once again over 50 Imperial Authority. So... 
uh, I think the three out of the four reforms that I've passed, if that's accurate in what I'm saying, have been very inefficient. So uh, once again, I hope, although uh, it tilted me and I was frustrated, and I certainly know I could do better and have actually done better, um, just simply not in these recordings, uh, I hope that, uh, yeah, you guys are optimistic that you could also do better if you were successfully simulating this. The fact that it's probably been about a, a total of 12 or 13 Imperial Authority, which has been sort of wasted this series, uh, which is certainly pretty significant and pretty inefficient. Um, but before we wrap up this episode, guys, you can see that the war with the Ottomans, just like I said, is, is pretty straightforward. His uh, enthusiasm is going to really drop, and uh, we just occupied his capital. Uh, so at this stage, the wars are so bad that I'm kind of going for the full annexation-esque strategy, but we're definitely going to get the war score that we need here. Um, it's just a matter of time. But with that being said, guys, I wanted to answer a question that somebody asked in one of the comments because I thought it was pretty significant. Somebody else might have the same concerns. But basically, they were talking about how the Protestant Reformation seems to be a little bit inconsistent, apparently. I don't I don't know that myself, but apparently it does. Like, um, they don't spawn sometimes and so on around this patch. And uh, I, I have witnessed that, but I thought it was actually because of my influence, like the fact that we are crushing the Reformation, that they wouldn't necessarily spawn consistently. We've had three centers of Protestantism and two of, and one rather, excuse me, of Reformed. Um, but basically the question was, am I afraid that a center is going to spawn when I disallow wars inside of the empire? And therefore, I cannot enforce religion through war or diplomatically. So I just want to say, first of all, for those who don't know, you don't actually get the Christian, uh, the Catholic or Protestant modifier of Catholic or Protestant empire unless you actually win the league wars. And neither do you are you actually able to enforce religion on members of the empire because there is no official faith unless you have actually won the league wars um so definitely a kind of downside to being so swift with the empire but obviously being so swift with the empire and, and unifying it before the league wars definitely has it adva its advantages needless to say which outweigh the negatives i was so mad there guys rebels just spawned right on my army so really tilted this game but it is what it is it's just how it goes sometimes never lucky um, yeah, but the question was, are you afraid we need to sell, uh, to sell our wars that are sent to spawns? And the answer is no. I don't take that into consideration at all. And at this stage, I'm rushing it. And that's why I'm trying to take promises myself rather than feed subjects is to rush it. Because the reality is, is that you are going to have peace at least, which gives you more imperial authority. And even if they were heretical, you're rushing for the next 50 imperial authority um, which you're going to have via adding provinces, adding land to the empire. So it looks like I took a bit of com a compromise there and just took Serbia uh, because that war was uh, pretty inefficient. But, I mean, it is what it is. It's enough to do the job. And uh, it was only 45 war scores, so our truce will not be that long. And it's only going to be easier next time around. Uh, either way, guys, I just passed yet another reform. And we're that much closer to revoking. And I think that it does not take much time at all. We're going to have plenty of land to add after we integrate Byzantium. Either way, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time in a future episode.